Now the starting lineup for Detroit up front, Dantley and Mahorn, they are newcomers to the lineup as far as the playoffs are concerned for the Pistons. And their fine coach Chuck Daly, who has done an excellent job with this franchise. As for Atlanta, the same five that opened up a year ago against the Pistons, and Atlanta won that series. It was a five-game set, and Mike Fratello got the job done there in four games. Jake O'Donnell and Bill Sarr to work it, and Dick Babetta seated across the way. He is the alternate. O'Donnell letting Isaac a little feel on that basketball to see that uh, he approves of it, and then we'll be ready to go. And there, the main man as far as the Hawks are concerned, and someone, Billy Hoon Fratello, I guess, wants to get off as quickly as he can on this series. Well, he wants... Dominique to get started as quickly as possible because he can create so many opportunities for his teammates because he'll force deep Detroit defensively to make a lot of adjustments if he gets off strong. Now they're going to change basketballs and what the situation is here. Well, you know, the basketball, the visiting team has the choice of what basketball they'd like to use. And it appears that Isaiah had chosen a ball before they got started. And when they got out here for the jump ball, somewhere along the line, it was a different basketball. between these two teams a year ago. That was a great final game, wasn't it? Double overtime, Atlanta prevailing, 114 to 113. I'd be very surprised to see the score in the first game anywhere near last year at 140, 122. The Hawks in their home white with the opening tap. Rivers and Whitman in that backcourt. Whitman out of Indiana. He'll continue to look for screens to get open. On the run that time, Whitman puts in the game first field goal. Now here's a superstar, Isaiah Thomas. He'll key everything as far as the Pistons are concerned, and we'll see how quickly Dantley can get into the flow underneath. Frequently, he gets to the line. Mahorn bangs in two from the perimeter. Well, Rick Mahorn has shed, shedded quite a few pounds out there and is playing a lot quicker, more aggressively at the offensive end of the court, and Chuck Daly feels they're going to need that. No, two for two. He shot well the other night in the elimination game against the Pacers in Indiana. Good job done by Jack Ramsey with that ball club. Dumars, the other guard. Lambeer, great range, hook shot, rolls in. Well, that's something you don't see very often from Bill Lambeer, going inside, and I think he shot Willis making that strong move with the hook shot. Lambeer switches on Rivers, who keeps coming around the corner. The miss, and there's the battle for the rebounds, and it goes to the Hawks and put it down and bring Rollins to the line. Chance for a three-point play right off the top. Well, this is where Atlanta is so strong, getting to the offensive boards. And we see the penetration by Rivers allows and forces Lambeer to help. And there's Tree Rollins following in and, and getting a chance now for a three-point play. Well, some of the fans probably haven't seen too much of the Hawks this year. Billy, what about Rollins? What kind of a year is he having in the pivot? Well, Tree Rollins, his duty out there is to block shots and rebound. He is also the leader of this ball club off the court. He's kind of the father image of this very young Hawk ball club. This is Dantley. Bounce pass back outside, and this is Dumars left open. Another rebound run down by Dantley. Offensive rebound, Pistons second chance. They'll try to prevent that as this series continues. Dantley with that familiar back-end move of his, kept on the outside by Wilkins that time. Lambeer short, had a hand in his face, and great rebound by Dantley, and Rollins came up over behind him. That was sheer strength by Adrian Dantley to Basketball wrestle that three. ball free. Just out wrestles Dominique Wilkins for that basketball. Now they're going to call that foul on Rivers as Dantley moves up to the line. Boy, he gets to that free throw line frequently. At the forward position, he's as good as there is in the NBA, having that ability to get to the line. When he drives to the basket, the first thing he's thinking about is drawing that contact. It's really something, the procedure he goes through with that basketball. Yeah. Now 
we see right off the bat a 2-1-2 trap by Detroit. More than anything, trying to slow Atlanta down and force them to use a little of that 24-second clock. Here's Rivers trying to set the table for Fratello. Whitman again on the move. Misfiring. Run down by Dominic, who's trying to get in the offense. Misfiring and gets it back. On a third chance missing, Lambeer finally out for the Pistons. Here's Dumars. Penetrates Mahorn. Strong fella. Got the roll, too. Well, we see, though, that Atlanta is just going to pound the offensive boards. And what Detroit's going to have to do is their guards are even going to have to get in there defensively on the boards to help out. On the turnover. And that is a foul against Willis. An offensive foul. Turnover is charged against the Hawks in that category. From the side, the Pistons will bring it up. But as Will is pushing off with that right arm, trying to get that position against Mayhorn. Lambert is open. That's a shot he usually buries. Former Notre Dame star, like Danley. Whitman again, and this time knocked away by Isaiah, and a foul called by Jake O'Donnell. What about that bandage we noticed there on Isaiah's hand, Billy? What's, uh, what's the problem there on his right hand? Brent, uh, earlier in the season, he dislocated that finger, and the doctors said that if it was anyone else, they would have operated on it right away. But he watched, wears that cast or brace on his finger, otherwise he wouldn't be able to play. And I, it's got to affect his ball handling. Frank Johnson felt that sting the other night in Landover when uh, he and Isaiah got into it late in that game. Both were tossed out. I asked Isaiah what happened. He said Johnson was pinching him. <laughs> now, like a couple of girls, he pinched me, so I knocked him down, Isaiah said. Well, Isaiah will not back down from anybody, and as a matter of fact, the man that just made the inbounds pass to him, Rick Mahorn, when Rick Mahorn was in Washington, they were, the two of them went at it. There comes Isaiah through with the left hand. That a pretty move. Uh, the pretty, the beauty of it is he was he read the defense, he saw the double team coming, and he just split it for the easy basket. Well, Phyllis hasn't contributed much yet. Rivers trying to get in the flow. That's a big shot for Rivers. He really struggled against Indiana. He only shot 28% in that series from the field. Off Thomas, and right there's Mahorn for a thunder dunk. Now, if Rick Mahorn continues to score in this fashion, he has six points so far, this forces Mike Fratello to make uh, adjustments defensively against this Detroit team, because you don't plan on Mahorn scoring a lot of points. We'll check in on that Golden State-Utah game. That's the big one out last game five. Rivers misses it, stays with it offensively, and now Wilkins goes crashing to the floor there at the end line. It's getting awfully physical in there early. We knew this series would turn physical. We just didn't know how early. I thought Detroit had a big advantage coming into this game because they, they finished their series Wednesday and had a lot of time to prepare for this Hawk ball club, whereas Atlanta just had yesterday, and they got in, I think, 3 o'clock Saturday morning from Indianapolis, and they didn't have much time to prepare for this Detroit ball club. Yeah, you saw Whitman uh, commit that foul. He was trying to hold off Danley all the way off. Finished their series Wednesday and had a lot of time to prepare for this Hawk ball club, whereas Atlanta just had yesterday, and they got in, I think, 3 o'clock Saturday morning from Indianapolis, and they didn't have much time to prepare for this Detroit ball club. Yeah, you saw Whitman uh, commit that foul. He was trying to hold off Danley all the way on that. Now, Detroit has hit its last four shots from the field. Sort of a clear out here with A.D. backing in. He's got daylight. That's a nice move when the center goes to the other side over to the weak side and they let Dantley swing through there alone on Dominique Wilkins. And the patience of Dantley leading the defense, seeing if they were going to double team and not. Dominique Wilkins will not be able to contain Adrian Dantley one-on-one. -on -one. Both coaches sticking with their starters so far. Willis with a jump hook from the right baseline. His first field goal of this playoff series, and it came at the 734 mark opening period. You know, another interesting point is that we have not seen a play, play run for Dominique Wilkins early in this basketball game. He's open. 
defensive error underneath. No one picked up Dantley. He couldn't believe he was that alone. He swung toward the goal, and so there'll be a timeout. And Mike Fratello will talk about that, and the Pistons will huddle around their coach, Chuck Daly. We'll be back to Atlanta in a moment. Mars, offensive rebounding, edge to the Pistons so far. Horn missing. Knocked away and out of bounds, and it'll go over to the Hawks. Well, that shows you the confidence Chuck Daly has in Rick Mahorn setting that play up for him to shoot his 17-foot jump shot. That You didn't see that in the past. Now, here's the most important stat. Every Atlanta starter has scored except the one they want the most of all, Wilkins. Whitman misfiring, Dumars rebounding, and still Wilkins not yet on the scoreboard here. And there's a collision over there between Saar and the player. And the ball is going to go down and out of bounds on that far side. And it'll go over to the Atlanta Hawks, and we're going to have our first substitute. Antoine Carr is going to check in. There's the replay. Tried to save it. Now, by taking Willis out and bringing Carr in, what does that do for this line? Well, Carr was a key factor in that Indiana series. He was the one that held them in the last ball game and allowed them to win that game. And he contributes immediately coming off the bench. Boy, he's a load, isn't he? An excellent post-up player. A player that's had a lot of injuries during the course of his career. As a matter of fact, he was drafted by this piston ball club, and he was involved in a trade. Dantley is spinning to the left, cutting back to the right, going to the underhand, shooting layups. Total of seven points here early. You cannot allow Adrian Dantley to spin. You have to keep him going in one direction and look for that help defensively. Now they cut Carr again. The pass was not easy to handle. Knocked out of bounds. And the foul is going to be called on Thomas, his second here in the early going. So he sits down on that piston bench. And here, speaking of instant offense, they'll send in some now. And Benny Johnson. It won't take Johnson long. He is not bashful. That's how he contributes to this ball club off the bench. One of the best six men in the NBA. He was tracking Whitman. Down away from the ball, Dantley was pressing Wilkins, and he's assessed with his first personal. 14 on the Pistons. Now they've got to get Dominique a good shot. They're trying. Mahorn to double, misfired, and up over the top was Carr committing the foul. When you play against the Atlanta Hawks, you cannot, when the shot goes up, turn and go to the, bas to the ba uh, basket. You must turn and make sure you put a body on the man you're playing. Otherwise, they'll come right over your back for the tips, as we saw in that last play. Danley hit six in a row. There's a chance to make it eight. Great defense by the tree underneath. Wilkins giving it up, though, and it was right to Lambeer, and now Dantley will go to work on Rollins. Do the foul. Now, the defense that last time down, you saw when Dominique got to the open court, they attacked him because once he gets to the foul line and in, there's nothing he can do because he's going to dunk that basketball. He'll just jump over everybody. And he had a problem, Brent, in that last series, series against Indiana, Indiana, committing turnovers like that. Pistons and the Hawks. Well, you see, 
how effective he is. And Dantley is giving up a few inches, plus that great jumping ability that, that Dominique has. He's got to do a job on checking him off the boards. Another great move by Dantley. He couldn't get it to fall. Rollins fouls it. Well, Dominique has just got to do a better job defensively. Adrian, if he doesn't, if they don't, do, well, watch how he just goes by Dominique Wilkins, and Tree Rollins comes over to give some help, and and there's Wilkins. He doesn't even get back in and look to give some help on the defensive boards. He's got to do that. But what do you think? Is he playing him too tightly? What do you observe here? Well, it appears that what Mike Patello is going to have to do, well, you have to give up the jump shot, if anything, to Adrian Dantley. He is so good going to the basket. And if you're going to give up anything, you give up the jump shot. You force him a little further out in the court, make him shoot a jump shot. John Tonkak, Hawk Center checking in. Another of their seven footers. Rollins sits down. Willis Reed walks down to the end of the bench and discusses a few things with him. And I think that's a big key, that center position for Atlanta during the course of this playoff series. And if they go further than this, because they do not get offensive productivity out of their center position. I think at some point that could haunt them. Now, Danley got that one to fall, but he is not happy with the rotation he's getting on his free throws right now. Now he's missed three free throws so far in this game. And Wilkins outside, Dantley off of him there. Here's Whitman. Whitman is taking more shots than anybody and scoring more as far as the Hawks are concerned. Eight of their 19 points. Dantley has taken more shots than anybody for the Pistons, Billy. I was going to say, the Whitman is the one fellow on this ball club, Atlanta, you cannot allow to shoot that jump shot. I just saw another one, a fellow by the name of Johnson. Well, Vinny Johnson, once he gets in that zone, it doesn't matter if you're double teaming, triple teaming. That's that old zone. Oh, I know. It's just phenomenal when he gets it rolling. Get Dantley pressuring Wilkins. Dominique cuts through him that time. Lambier out with the rebound. Dominique a bit frustrated here in the early going. Johnson with the pull up. Contact with a rebound, and Mahorn had a hand in the small of his back. Now we'll take a break here in Atlanta. When you come back, we'll be inside of three minutes. Opening period, the Pistons with the lead. We understand that he was arrested. Now when Pat O'Brien comes along at the half, he'll have all the details on that story. He'll get us up to date on what happened to Ellis down there. As far as his performance on the court is concerned so far, you can hardly ask for anything more than the job he's done for Bickerstaff. John Conkak at the free throw line for the Atlanta Hawks. Conkak played his college basketball down in Texas, SMU in Dallas. mentioned that the Pistons had hit those six in a row. Well, since then, they're only two of eight against Fratello's defense. Johnson, fake contact, pass off of John Sally, who checked in. Good hustle by contact. Here come the Hawks. They can tie it. Guard. Short and Lambeer yanks another rebound away. Isaiah still sitting for the Pistons. Johnson and Dumars in the backcourt. Wilkins gets a hand on it right back to Johnson. Sally played his college ball right here at Georgia Tech. Here's Johnson off that quick jumper of his. He's buried a couple here in the opening period. John Sally has had a fine year for this Piston ball club. He leads this team in blocking shots. He's blocked 125 this season. Yeah, there were some doubts about him coming out of Georgia Tech, too. He's uh, he's played very well in the NBA so far. And they get it back into the hands of Rivers. Nice pass to contact. He blew it coming down the line, but he was fouled. And we saw John Sally blocking that shot. Blocked it a little too well and yeah. was assessed his first person. Let's take a look. Eric's contact going to the hoop. Got him right across the wrist. Not a very good foul shooter. Shot 65% during the course of the regular season. Sitting on 
on that three inside of two minutes here in the opening period in Atlanta. And it was an offensive foul as Johnson came around the screen. That's two on Sally already. And Mike McGee, a guard who won a championship ring with the Los Angeles Lakers checking in, and Wilkins sitting down. And Sidney Green off of Daly's bench as both coaches start to experiment now with their benches to see what they're going to have on this series. Rivers on the move, nice penetrating move. That was a great move for him, but during the course of the playoffs, he's got to hit that jump shot. And you see that when a player does something like that, he's showing a lack of confidence. When you have that foul line jump shot uncontested, you got to shoot it. Sally was coming around the screen, and Jake is talking to Adrian Dantley as he comes around there. 35 holes. Now that's Carr on the hold, his second. Comes back to that free throw line again. That's four of seven from AD at the line with Levingston checking in. He replaces a former Wichita State teammate as Carr sits down. So Cliff Levingston in there along with McGee, Rivers. Konkak and Willis back against Dumars, Lambeer, Dantley, Johnson. Diamond, Diamond, Diamond! And Sidney Green, the fifth player on there, whom I failed to mention, now drops back on defense across the midcourt line. We're going to see the pick and roll involving Willis and Rivers. Short on the three. Willis offensive rebound. Get that long rebound off a missed three. Boy, yet I can't emphasize it enough, Frank. You know that it's just keeping this Atlanta team right in the ball game right now. They're just getting so many more opportunities on the glass. Willis's jump hook is short, and that time Green rebounding, and into the hands of Dumars, who checks the clock and sees that it's come down to last shot time here in the opening period, or at least close to it. But you notice the tempo that this Detroit Piston team plays at. They don't look to force the ball running, the, running up and down the court. Good defense that time. Force the turnover. Now contact makes it five on five. Levingston shot. With time running out here in the opening period. Regrouped after that sluggish start, came on with a good burst. Shut. Wow! Michael Jordan takes it. Shot by Jordan. Good. Isaiah quickly up the right side. Isaiah will go all the way to the baseline. Scoop and score. What a shot! Magic Johnson down the middle. Oh, the look pass to Johnson. Bird to Vincent to Bird. Over the back door. Oh. America's game. It's fantastic. CBS Sports coverage of the 1987 NBA playoffs. All right, we start the second period. 27-26. That offensive rebounding stat that you mentioned, Billy. Well, Atlanta had seven offensive rebounds in the first period. And the Pistons could not get one in that sequence. They touch it, goes out of bounds off the Johnson miss. And in the shooting way. from the field, though, what was the situation there? Atlanta 58%, or excuse me, 40%, Detroit 58%. It shows you what that offensive boards have done for Atlanta. McGee in contact, working a little two-man game. Contact, yanks down, still another offensive rebound. Willis taps it the other side, and the Hawks controlling that offensive glass, although they could not score with that opportunity. Size advantage underneath, the seven-foot brigade. Contact, Willis, Rollins, they've got three of them. That on contact is first personal foul. Now, 
this factor for Atlanta. They really struggled on the offensive boards against Indiana. Their last two games against Indiana, they had seven in one game and three in the other ball game. And that's uh, just beautiful ball movement that time. Well, they should get more of that now that Isaiah Thomas has come back off the bench and is running Daly's attack here for Detroit and Spudwell. Probably. Well, we'll Top see the five in popularity, isn't he? Well, we'll see the tempo go up besides the his popularity. Contact with a little short shot there from the right baseline. Five points for John. There's only one starter in the ballgame right now for Atlanta, and that's Kevin Willis. Yeah, it's McGee and Webb in that backcourt. Levingston, Tomcak, and Willis, the starter. A good move by Green to get inside Willis. And then use his left hand. McGee. He has really made himself into an offensive player. I know he was the leading scorer for, in the Big Ten when he played at Michigan, but when he was with the, the L.A., he was always thought of as a defensive player, but by good hard work, he's get, made himself a real force with that three-point shot or a long perimeter shot. Dantley with a spinner, has to give it up. Mahorn. Contact rebounds Hawks. Here's Spud. Turning it up. Livingston didn't have an open path, loses it inside. Johnson comes out for the Pistons. Green travel. Now that last play down the court when Livingston turned it over, that was Spudge Webb's fault because he gave the ball up too early. Now we see another turnover coming back. Green just out of control right there. He should have, if anything, just catch it, catch it and go up and shoot the short jump shot. Now we're close to the 10-minute mark, so we'll take a television break here. Be right back. Excellent job on Dominique, but you also have to be very concerned that he hasn't been a factor and you're down one point. Dennis Rodman on the floor out of Southeast Oklahoma State for Detroit. He's number 10. Wilkins only one of six, gets it back into the hands of Webb. Thomas tracking him, and here's Willis. Gets free of green, uses that leverage, get a little daylight, and pull the trigger. He's a hard-working power forward, one of the better ones in the NBA. Came out of Michigan State, didn't play much as a senior because of injuries. Thomas the pass and McGee jumping out on him committed the foul his first I, I wonder what Mike McGee was thinking about he just came running out there and jumping at Isaiah now what's happening is they're rotating defensively and he's coming out on Isaiah now leaving your feet defensively all Isaiah could, could have done everything nice on the follow he went for Rodman but if you leave your feet defensively, you can't do it. Isaiah is going to either penetrate or make the, make the good pass to the open man. All right, contact on the turnaround. Gets the bounce. Boy, is he aggressive today offensively, and they're looking for him. Very important for this ball club, I think, to get some offensive production out of the middle for Atlanta. Short, and Rodman had it lined up in his hands. Well, that's where the big people are supposed to be, on the boards, and no one, no one was in any, any or even close to checking out Rodman, and he had the easy two. Contact going for it again. That's nine points for Contact. I haven't seen him this aggressive offensively. He's almost demanding that basketball when he gets down there low. Webb. Got a hand on the ball and knocked it past Dennis Rodman out of bounds with Lambeer returning for Detroit. Green will sit down. Now early on in a, in a seven game series when the coaches use the bench, usually in that second period, they're experimenting a lot. 
seeing if they can gain any kind of advantage. But as much as anything, they're sort of looking down the road to see what kind of matchups they're going to get. Great steal by Dominic. I wonder what he's going to do. Johnson forced one. Lambert offensive rebound, and here's Thomas going to work. That's his second field goal. So now the two stars start to pick it up a little bit. Webb coming in, fouled by Rodman. Now this tempo is much too quick for Detroit. They do not want this, and they're going to have to do something after this timeout to stop it. Game breakers. Brought to you by Seagram's Coolers. Greatness must withstand the test of time, and Randy Smith did it on a nightly basis. Saying he came to play every night was no cliche. Smith was on the court for a record 906 straight games. A lightning-quick guard who could make opponents wither, Randy Smith went from being a seventh-round draft choice to becoming an all-time NBA game-breaker. Let's give you a little overview. This is one of what could be a seven-game series, Eastern Conference semifinal. Tuesday night, Billy Cunningham. Of course, the other one, it'll be Boston and Milwaukee. Meanwhile, in the West, now Golden State and Utah are tied at two, the winner to take on the Lakers. And an update on that score reveals that now, playing in Salt Lake, the road teams ahead, 44 to 36. What about the Milwaukee Celtics series? Well, during the regular season, they ended up three and three. Neither team able to win on the road. So, and Milwaukee, when we were out there last week doing that game, they're very confident and feel they can give the Celtics a run for it. And if McHale is hurt, they definitely could. All right, McGee gets it back, gets on the penetration. Offense, no basket. Don't score it. Offensive foul. That's his second. Detroit has got to turn it up a notch because that's what the Atlanta Hawks have done. Their intensity has increased drastically with this bench in the ballgame. Time remaining first half. Isaiah hits the home run. That's such a luxury that Chuck Daly has over there because they ran their play. Atlanta did a great job defensively, but he still has the basketball. <laughs> and he can fire that free. McGee checks inside Willis and the horn fouled him. That's his second. Sally returns for Detroit. Substitution for Detroit. Mahorn sits down. Replacing Mahorn is number 20. Sally will take on Willis. Sally could be a big factor in this series. He matches up a little bit better as far as height is concerned against Willis. Willis wants it inside. He wants to go to work on the rookie. Gets help from Thomas. Get it back to Wilkins on the move. Good tip in by Willis. He's strong, isn't he? You see him pressure his way between two coming out of there. Offensive boards, and we have not seen Dominique Wilkins get a shot where he looked comfortable. He was off balance again trying to shoot that shot. Johnson jacks up another miss from the perimeter, but again, it's Rodman right underneath. That's twice now. He's been the right man in the right spot for Daly. But Chuck Daly has great confidence. He's got two rookies in there now with Rodman and Sally. And he just obviously thinks very highly of them. And they're out there and playing excellent basketball for this club. That gets it back on the pick and roll. Wilkins, and he's coming inside on Sally, and he'll come up to try and complete the three-point play. It's just excellent play by Spud Webb. And once Dominique gets the ball near the lane area, there's nothing you can do. You, you, you know, you almost break, I think, should back off, let him get the dunk, don't pick up the foul, and that was Sally's third. Dantley replaces Sally. Wilkins completes the three-point play. And you also saw that Joe Dumars is returning for Detroit. 
Rodman continuing. Four starters plus the young man. Lamb there pushing away against Willis underneath, and Dantley went after it, and here's Rodman. He covered up defensively, had to give it up, and Wilkins on the move. Spud well to it. Two great athletes. Now watch out to Spud. And there's Willis finishing it off. Yeah, if we were to put our finger on one thing that has triggered this comeback by Fratella and the Hawks, it is his bench. Absolutely. And Spud Webb has been the one that has ignited this team. He has got them aggressive defensively. They're looking to push the ball up the court and create some opportunities for themselves with the up tempo. And let's not forget that Concac has contributed nine points. He was aggressive immediately when he came in the game. Yeah, and we did not see that in the Indiana series. He was not the aggressive player. And you would have thought, you know, coming into this series, playing against Lampier, who's 6'11", uh, that he might not be aggressive. But, in, but he sure is, and he's making things happen. There's the trap. Rodman on the move, coming inside. He drew the foul, and he'll step up to that free throw line, and that on Spud Webb, his first. Now, the nice thing that Dennis Rodman did then is he realized after the trap, he ended up isolated with Spud Webb. So he just looked to take it as strong as he could to the basket and was able to draw the foul. He's played well, hasn't he? Definitely. the draft last year is someone they wanted to pick in the second round but he was an excellent draft choice by the Detroit Pistons there's the double team contact all along they left him now yesterday in practice that was one thing that Mike Fratello went over and over with his players that on the opposite box from the basketball, you're wide open, and that's what they were able to do, execute and get that easy layup. Stanley coming out, Patella wanting the turnover. They ought to clear and let, no, that's a situation that they should have cleared and let Stanley go one-on-one -on -one with contact. contact. Jump up, rolls in for Willis. 10 points. Oh, Willis. Well, if they don't get a hoop here, Chuck Daly might need a timeout because this team is on a roll right now. Uh -oh. And Thomas and Concac square off in the paint. Well, what happened is Isaiah shuffle cut off his screen and Concac stepped out to bump him a little bit. I guess Isaiah thought he bumped him a little too hard. Now Whitman is out there along with Willis as contact sits down. Wilkins, Carr, and Rivers. Lamb Bear, meanwhile, takes his game outside. Six points here in the first half for the Pistons. Now we see a small lineup in there for Atlanta with Willis moving to the center position. Wilkins. He catches it and shoots it so quickly and so that he can jump right over you, Prince. It's so difficult to defend him. Dantley loses control. He had an opening. Thomas saves it. Underneath, it's Rodman sticking with it. And finally, Wilkins comes out for the Hawks. Whitman alone. Thomas rebounding out in Dumars will have an easy layup. Dumars contributes his first field goal here. And Golden State continues to lead Utah. 
Rivers offensive foul. Yeah, he's just pressing and forcing things that are not there. And that you got to give Dennis Rodman a lot of credit for hanging in there and drawing right. that charge. He's really playing well. We'll be right back. Most bottled beers have to take the heat. The heat. And a special feature on Earl Lloyd, the first black to play in the NBA. And we'll bring you up to date on that Dale Ellis story that Brent talked about earlier today. Let's go back to Brent. All right, Pat, thank you very much. In case you missed it when I alluded to it, and Dale Ellis got into some kind of a scrape down in Houston. Of course, some athletes have some difficulty down in Houston. I imagine many of you remember what happened to the Mets last year when they were down there. Speaking of that, Tim Raines opened up that game today for Montreal, let it off with a home run. So much for spring training, Billy Cunningham in baseball. The owners are thinking we can save all that money. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas on the penetration gets inside for the Pistons and gets the roll. And now he has scored nine points. That time, Detroit did an excellent job moving the ball against that trap of Atlanta. It's interesting, the first half, the different defenses each coach has tried. You know, they've played straight up, they've doubled down. And I think they're exploring, as you had mentioned, which is best for them in this playoff series. Lewis misses outside, but Carr was still another offensive rebound. And more importantly, he scores off that offensive rebound. Well, I know one thing Chuck Daly will be discussing with his team at halftime, and that's it. Do you guys want to win this ball game or not? And if you do, everybody better start doing a better job on the board. Goes to the left hand, does Isaiah. That's truly special. Wilkins collides the baseline. Try to stop Isaiah. He gets it to Dumars for the layout. His second field goal of the first half. Excellent move. Curled right around that screen, and no one was there to help defensively for Atlanta. They're just double the double. Yeah, they're not going to let him get that open court against them. Willis takes it. But Dominique has matured so much as a player swinging the basketball as soon as he sees that double team. He wouldn't have done that a couple years ago. Thomas, good move, and goes to the left hand. Didn't you tell me those two guys are good friends, Rivers and, and Thomas? They grew up banging on each other back in the Chicago area. And Rivers went up to Marquette. Thomas led the Indiana Hoosiers to a national championship. And he's playing with his old teammate over against his old teammate, Randy Whitman. Dally got a hand on it, and here's Tom. Does not get this one off. Come to the end of the first half. With Atlanta up by a point, 57-56. Pat O'Brien will be back with the Prudential at the half right after this message. Am I drained? I'm almost ready to burn out in this soft white light bulb. But if I were in the Sylvania soft white bulb, I'd last 5% longer. Why, in their 60 watt alone, I'd have 50 more shining hours at no extra cost. So get Sylvania soft white light bulbs and get the most out of me. Ask for Sylvania, where the best comes to light. There's a plan for building a house. You should have a plan for moving out of one. That's why Ryder gives you our Move It Yourself guide. Mom, look what I found. Oh my God. It helps you handle every step, from picking the best truck, to packing your lamps, to shutting off the power. Got a spot for this? Oh. What's that? Hair. Ryder. We're there at every turn. We'll announce the final cuts after tomorrow's practice. I can't sleep in my land, I think. You gotta start heading from out there, Harris. Oh, I need a drink of cool, cool rain. The way to stay cool is clear. Stepping up is a good Wednesday.
day. She said if I ever got into trouble, I should look up my father. I wish you had. I did. Emma Sand, Stuart Damon, Vanity, and John Carlin guest on Hammer. Then... Who'd want to fly with a guy somebody's trying to kill? Maybe he was hit by mistake. You're a dead man, and so was your friend, Mr. Higgins, if you crossed me. I'm sorry, Thomas. Magnum and... Can you help me? The guy is killing innocent women. I want to stop. Two to 89, and Milwaukee now advances into playoffs. It was Julius Irving's final house call. Let's go now to Milwaukee and James Brown with the doc. All right, Pat, thank you very much. Julius, you knew it was coming to an end at some point. Has the finality of it hit you all yet, and what's your reaction? Well, the finality of it has really hit me, and my reaction is that I think we should look at the big picture when we think about um, my career, think about the season that we've had, rather than just this individual game. Uh, with five minutes to go in the game, it seemed as though Milwaukee was going to win. And um, at that moment, it became necessary just to think about playing as hard as you can and as well as you can to finish out the string, be a real professional. A 23-city farewell. Everyone talks about you generally being the guy who provided the shot in the arm for this league and actually saved this league. Have you actually had a chance to think uh, and grasp a hold of that concept, what you've meant to the league, the NBA? Well, my business manager, Irwin <laughs> Weiner, has reminded me of that a few different, on a few different occasions. But that's not something I really focus on. I think, uh, you know, my emphasis is on my individual career, my uh, team, and what our goals are. In terms of the status of the league, uh, that's generally been left in the hands of the Board of Governors and the Commissioner, and they've done a very, very fine job. <laughs> you look very comfortable holding that CBS mic. The question <laughs> I have to ask you, what does the future hold for Julius Irving? Well, I think there'll be a variety of things in my life in the future. Um, certainly the, uh, the doors are open and the way has been uh, paved uh, for me to move into a variety of areas. As a Coca-Cola bottler, you know I'm going to get involved in that. As a television station owner, station owner I'm going to get involved in that. And a lot of things that I've done part-time over the last six or seven years, I think now they've moved to the forefront of my work schedule. But even as a priority before them, I think the uh, time and energy that I haven't been able to give to my family and friends, I think I owe them that. And for a short time anyway, I think that, that should be the number one priority. Pat O'Brien has got a question for you. Pat? Doc, uh, this is Pat O'Brien in Atlanta. You've had such a brilliant basketball career. How are you going to top this act? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when I came into basketball, I, I really wasn't uh, trying to outshine anyone. And I uh, wasn't necessarily uh, looking for stardom. I was just looking for... I had high standards. And I uh, just wanted to fulfill my destiny, fulfill my potential, and uh, use the tools that I've been blessed with to be the best that I could be. So I'll apply the same approach to whatever I do next. Doc, on behalf of all of us, and I guess all the fans, thank you for all you've done for basketball. You've taught us a lot about basketball, about life, and about just class act as well. And uh, I thank you, and hey, we're going to miss you. Don't be a stranger, OK? Well, you're very welcome. And let me say that I've learned a lot in these 16 years, I've learned a lot from uh, the people who uh, have uh, supported me throughout these 16 years, and uh, even in arenas where the fans booed. Uh, it was a challenge, and uh, I learned a lot from them, just about the uh, character of people. And uh, I've been uh, blessed in such a special way that I think it's necessary for me to say thanks, because this year has been unbelievable. <laughs> All right, Doc, thank you very much. Talk about unbelievable. So it's goodbye to Dr. J. Hello, Julius Irving. Brett and Billy are coming back uh, as that the half rolls on from the Omni after a commercial and a word from your local station. Stay with us. Enjoy the second half here on CBS. It's a jungle. That period was scoreless in the second. And I'll tell you another interesting thing is the centers for Atlanta. Nice move by Isaiah. Have scored 14 points. That's Rollins and Concac to Lampier, six. Good production out of Rollins and especially Concac off the bench. So Fratello has to be pleased with the way his bench picked up the tempo. And now we'll see how the Pistons respond. Immediately they come out and regain the lead here. It's open for Rivers coming inside. And he was fouled. on Lamb here, his second. And the action continuing east and west as far as the NBA playoffs are concerned. 
CBS will take you out west next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern Time. And then on Sunday, we will have NBA coverage at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And again, it'll be Milwaukee-Boston, one Eastern Conference semifinal. This is the other one. And then the two winners will meet for the Eastern Conference Championship. One of the changes I'd like to see the NBA make, I'd like to see them go the way of the National Hockey League and first determine a division champion and start four out of seven right away. If you're curious about some of the matchups that would have had this year, well, it would have been Washington against Philadelphia, Moses Malone against Julius. One of the New York teams would have been in the playoffs, and Chicago would have had to struggle the last week. They would have been eliminated by a game traveling on the turnover. Love those rivalries within the division, and then you cannot have anybody accusing another team of tanking to get position in an eight-team conference matchup, which is what we had, because one plays four and two plays three. Something for the Board of Governors to think about next year. They might want to make a suggestion and have you on that board. <laughs> no thanks. Switch over here to Rivers, coming down the baseline. Hey, three. The three. See that penetration, either you're going to get, if there's a missed shot, you're going to be on the offensive boards or Rivers penetrating and finding three for that easy layup. It's Isaiah. Rivers out on his one-time buddy, and Thomas gets on the penetration into the hands of Mahorn. Great block by Rollins. Here comes Willis out to Rivers, past the Whitman. Now that's what Atlanta wants to do, and they're they're just exceptional when they're able to get to the open court. That's a great team ball in that sequence, wasn't it? Dantley fouled. Well, we see as soon as Dantley puts the ball on the floor when he's isolated, they're sending Rivers at him to try and force him to give it up. That time, there were three players. Willis even came over to double him. Moving out to the top of the circle. Hits Thomas. Improved shooting position. 17 points for Isaiah, and he had only two in the first period. Dominique on the spin, but he traveled. Dominique can't believe it. That's the seventh hot turnover. We've got a two-point game, and we've got a commercial timeout. Now, Rollins will come up. He is the first hawk with the block shot. Now, Willis realizes he wants to get it in the hands of his point man. Here comes Rivers. There's three. The pass to Whitman, four. The fifth man, Wilkins. He puts a screen down inside and gives Whitman the lane. The beauty is how they react. As soon as that ball was blocked by Trey, there was a four-on-one fast break opportunity. And, Will and, and uh, Willis getting the ball into the middle to really create the type of fast break any coach would like to see. Brings it up for the Pistons. Here's Thomas shipping to Mahorn, who's open. He's got to hit that shot. He missed it. Lambeer with an offensive rebound. Yeah, Mahorn did not even look at the basket. There was no one within seven feet of him. You know, the, the thing is about this game, you get the feeling that Atlanta is playing their kind of game, and you look up the, up the scoreboard, and it's an even basketball game. Into the hands of Rollins. Rolls the hook on Now that's 18 points so far in this game from the middle for the Atlanta Hawks. Thomas inside, went to the left hand, not there. Good defense, and here's Whitman. Lost control momentarily. Looking for the break, but because it was slowed down, they'll go to the half-court setup. It'll be Rollins again. Lambert tried to draw the offensive foul and could not. I cannot remember seeing for the Hawks, this aggressive offensively. They're looking for the ball. They're demanding it from their teammates, and when they're getting it, they're making very confident, strong moves to the basket. Hawks have done a much better job on Dantley. Dumars drawing the foul. Now, 
Whitman second personal and two on the team here. Now, if they come down again as they have the last two times and go inside two, three Rollins, the next question is, is Chuck Daly going to have to make an adjustment and go double-team three Rollins? Because obviously this Hawk team feels that a weakness of Detroit is their inside defensive center play, and they're trying to attack it every time they have an opportunity. He might have to try somebody like Sally, too, to see if he can get a little more size inside for that uh, forward spot. Yeah, I don't know if Sally is physical enough to go in there and play against Trey, though. Now they're doing the same thing again. They're going to look Whitman to go inside to Trey. Now they're doubling this time. Thomas runs it down. Dumars is open ahead of him. Rivers back defensively. Three on one, and they get down. Looked like Dantley walked on that play. Isaiah has that basketball. It looks like it's just an extension of his hand. <laughs> you know, he has a string on the basketball. Rollins inside. Elbowed Lambeer. That's the third personal on Rollins. There's the elbow. Lambeer making sure that on the final side. Absolutely. Trey is still shaking his head. Like I he barely touched it. Now Rivers will come double as soon as he puts it on the floor. Rejected by Rivers. Here's Whitman. They didn't have much time left either. You can hear that shot clock going off right after the, the block. Great spinning move inside, but no hoop. And now Thomas comes back, but Rollins did not come back offensively, so it will not be layup time. Dantley from the left perimeter missing. Whitman. Dominique. Dominique has not been involved so far in this half. Gonna have to find some way to get his start, him started. Whitman on the runner goes to the left hand. That's a beautiful move using that left hand. It's interesting watching Isaiah as well as Whitman how well they use their left hand. Do you think Bobby Knight told him that? Dumars. Foul. I'd like to see that again. Because it looked like Rivers had that position to draw the charge. Now we'll take a look and see if Rivers has established that position. Let's take another look at it at a different angle. I think it was a charge. Fratello calls a timeout. 6-16 in the third. We'll be right back. deserves a lot of credit for keeping that team going in the right direction. Keep it up, and he'll be mentioned as a possible candidate to coach the Knicks. Everyone else has. <laughs> I see you turned down a mill. Uh, that was the bonus. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me the truth. Did you walk away from a million to coach a team? I think you know me well enough. <laughs> <laughs> you have said, where do I sign? Oh, gosh. on the attack here. Yeah, this is Whitman. That's a play he picked up from Knight. You were talking about the left hand come around those screens and squeeze the trigger. But in those days, Isaiah was passing the basketball to him. Now well, Pistons will try to tie it up here again. No make that take the lead. Take it outside and bang a three. Boy, he's playing a flawless game. Now, if he can, I'm sure he's thinking, now i got to get my defense going. This guy Whitman, I just can't do anything with him. Here's Whitman. He still can't do anything with him. Trying to make Isaiah work at that defensive end. One way to slow him up. Dantley on the drive. Gets it into the hands of Mahorn. Hook misses. Willis rebounding. Lead it by one inside of five left in the third period here in Atlanta. 
Wilkinson jump. That's 13 points and his first field goal of the second half. the ball and yeah. that's illegal defense is the call. We are live from Atlanta Georgia. This is the first game between Chuck Daly's Detroit Pistons and Mike Fratello's Atlanta Hawks 74 71 Atlanta with the lead and 424 to go third period Dumars count the basket and bring him to the line. Now what Chuck Daly decided Right there, if they, they took the ball side in, they were going to look to go at Randy Whitman defensively. He's hurting us at the offensive end of the court. Well, let's make him work a little defensively. And they just isolated, put four people on the baseline, and let Dumar just penetrate to the hoop. And Dumars ties the score. <laughs> Coaches sticking with their starting fives here in the second half. An offensive foul is the call against Whitman as Thomas crashes to the floor. That is four personals on Whitman. And now Fratello will go to the bench and bring in McGee. Now the question, can McGee come in and keep that offense rolling from that two guard position that Whitman was able to supply. Dantley is free. Great block by Willis. Here come the Hawks. Dominic losing it as he comes down the baseline. But it was hit last by a piston. Now here's another dimension of Kevin Willis. Blocking that shot, and you notice the two block shots we've seen in this period, they've been able to keep them in play and get great running opportunities out of them. Dumars holding Rivers, and that'll cost the Pistons a couple of free throws. Rivers will step up to that free throw line here for Atlanta. Shoot twice. Now, Doc is an 83% foul shooter during the regular season. So far in the playoffs, he's shooting under 50% from the foul line. You know, this young man developed ulcers during the course of this season, and I'm sure they're acting up right now. There's two of four from the line in this game, and he gives the Hawks a one-point lead here. Time remaining, third period. Thomas tries to hit Lamb beer off his hand here come the Hawks McGee for the layup well we see how the, this Atlanta team can create offense block shots turnovers and they love to get out and run was a tough shot. Willis was all over Lambeer. Thomas out on McGee and they get it into Willis. Jumps up over the hole and this is Lambeer rebounds into the hands of Dumars and the Pistons can seize the lead here. Here's Mahorn backing in on Willis. They've got the lead. Now one thing Detroit's got to watch that they don't get in this up and down the court game as Atlanta would like to have because if they do they're playing in the hands of the Hawks. There's a foul on Dantley pushing off on on uh, Dominique Wilkins. So we'll take a break here at the 237 mark third period Atlanta we'll be right back. Pete Maravich, Rick Berry, Bobby Wanzer, and Bob Hoobriggs. Hoobriggs played some time with Fort Wayne and the Detroit Pistons. Wanzer played with the Rochester Royals. Now plays golf on a great course up there. Oak Hill. Meanwhile, Golden State continues to lead Utah 
up 81 to 62. They were in the third period of that game. Here, Dominique Wilkins coming in on Dantley. Drew the foul from Dantley. He'll shoot a pair, and that's three on AD. Wilkins, 13 points, seven rebounds here this afternoon. I think one person, the family of Gus Johnson, I like to, I'm sure you do too, send out prayers and condolences out to him. Just a great player, a great guy, a true competitor, and every night he stepped on the court, you knew you had a battle, and I had the highest regard for that man. Jim Morris gets it to roll. Yeah, Gus was a, was a great player. Strongest player I ever played against. Now you get that hand on your hip, Billy, see, and you couldn't move. Only if he lets you. <laughs> Down away from the ball. Foul is called. Lambeer. And that's his third. Now we see them battling inside. Willis fighting for that inside position. And Lambeer pushing off. Spud Webb on the floor for the Hawks. John Sally will check in soon for the Pistons. That's 13 points for Willis to go with his eight rebounds, and here is Sally. Mahorn sits down. Sally will sign up for a weight program after he takes on Willis in this series. Yeah, and I think he realizes it now after a year of experience in the NBA that he's got to build up some strength more than anything. And I'm sure that he'll be on some type of weight program, a normalist program. Now we see them isolating 1-4 against Spud Webb. Three-point here. How about a center who takes it outside and hits the three? You notice what they're doing. It's a way of posting up Spud Webb. You put four people on the baseline. Dumar just takes him, backs him down, and if they double like they did that time, he finds the open man. Knocked away by Dantley, and the foul is called. His court. And so they will try Rodman. Dennis Rodman, number 10. Checking in for the Pistons. He turned in some quality minutes here in the first half. Rookie out of Southeast Oklahoma State. Danley sits down because of the foul problem. And John Concat on the floor. They better set the lineups. We've got a lot of changes here. Willis, Concat, and Wilkins will be up front for the Hawks. McGee and Webb in that backcourt. Sally, Lambeer and Rodman up front for the Pistons, and Dumars and Vinny Johnson. Now, Konkak in that first half scored 11 points off the bench. Well, this lineup in the second period Brent, really ignited this Atlanta team and got them into the flow of the game because they struggled except for the offensive boards in the first period. And Antoine Carr is waiting on the sideline to come in for Dominique Wilkins. Meanwhile, Donald uh, Lassar right over there on the far side. Leave it the way it is. He's not positive. It's still three points. Well, I guess there was some concern about Lambeer's uh, field goal. Is that it? Is that it was not positive about the three. That was the last three-point shot we had. But where we're sitting, that looked like a three. It appeared that he had both feet behind the line. Tied at 83. Time ticking away here in the third period. Sally. Rodman couldn't get it to fall of the offensive rebound in. Here's Wilkins. Loses it on the high dribble. Willis is there. Wasn't pretty, but it was effective. Now Rodman has gotten to the offensive force. That's his fifth offensive rebound so far in this, in this game. Benny Johnson. Contact hands it to Webb. Up tempo. Johnson rotating. And Carr returns for the Hawks. Now we'll see that three-point shot by Lambeer. 
Yeah, he had both feet behind that line. Now it's a tough matchup for Spud Webb. He's either got to play Vinnie Johnson or Isaiah Thomas, and I would expect them to look to post him up a little bit. Johnson trying to get into the rhythm. Ties the game at 85 inside of the one-minute mark here in the third period. It's the kind of series this one is going to be all the way. I'd be shocked if this one didn't reach a six and a, perhaps even a seventh game. Deflected. Going back after it was Carr. Here's Webb. McGee's three-pointer. Short. Rodman goes after it aggressively and comes away with the rebound. And here's Isaiah Thomas. Now there's a mismatch. Vinny has got Willis playing him. And we got Sally with McGee down low. They should get the ball inside, but they're running the clock down because we have one, 15 seconds left in the period. Off the fake, Johnson couldn't get it to fall. Boy, you can't say enough about this kid, Rodman. We've emphasized the fact that Detroit had to do the job on the defensive boards against this Atlanta team, but Rodman is on the boards every time, getting a hand on those offensive rebounds. And a jump ball call when it went out of bounds. Now, right now, Willis is trying to tap back between Konkak and McGee. Gets it to McGee on the run. They've got just those seconds to work with there. Spud Webb tries to get inside. Isaiah Thomas sticks right with it. End of the third period. We are tied at 85, Atlanta and Detroit. We're going to return to Atlanta, Georgia, right after these messages from your local station. This is CBS Sports coverage of the 1987 NBA playoffs. So you see how defense has truly become a priority with both of these ball clubs this year. And I think more than anything, that's maturity. Well, McGee and Webb in the backcourt. Contact, shipping to Carr. Carr has it blocked by John Sally. Score it. Goaltending is the call. Now we see Carr going. Oh, that was awfully close. It really was. Almost at the very, very top of that arc. Might have been a rotation down, though. Rodman short. Contact aggressively comes out. And here's McGee. Willis wanted it inside, McGee didn't see him in time, and now Sally gets to him defensively. Boy, this group is moving the ball very well for Atlanta. Conkak made an excellent pass that last time, finding Carr. They're sloughing off on Webb a little bit outside, though. Billy Thomas trying to help out if he can. And that time, Benny Johnson does an excellent job defensively on McGee. And the Pistons will come down, trailing it by two. Well, Spud likes to take the ball on the dribble. So if you back off him, you have to respect that great quickness of his. You cannot allow him to penetrate. If he hits that shot, you have to say, hey, nothing we can do about it. That was Concac and Mahorn muscling inside. And Concac has assessed his second personal as Wilkins returns here for the Hawks. Rodman, Thomas, Mahorn, Sally, and Johnson on the floor for the Pistons. Isaiah faking on Webb, gets it to fall. Score it and bring him to the line. If Atlanta, if, if Detroit's going to win this ball game, I think their guards out there right now are the ones that have to carry them offensively. Especially with Spud Webb in the game, Isaiah's going to look to take him as deep as he can, making sure he doesn't get too deep, though, for him, because if he gets too deep, then the big guys on this Atlanta team can come over and block some shots and shoot over Spud. Detroit leads it. This is going to be some series. <laughs> you bet. This is going to be some game. The scary thing is they're just feeling each other out in this first game. What's the six, sixth or seventh game going to be like? Wilkins on the move inside. And coming out with that rebound. The Pistons. Mahorn gets it into Thomas's hands. And here's Sally. And Sally had it knocked away. No foul into Rodman's hands. And here's Benny Johnson. Johnson from the perimeter hits that jump shot. Now the Pistons build a three-point lead. Rodman has seven offensive rebounds. Gets to the right position. Now they give it back to Carr, rolled off 
off that pick and drew the foul. Now Len is claiming that it was goaltending that the ball was pinned to the basket, to the backboard, excuse me, and they want a chance for a three-point play, but they're not going to get it. Now let's see if they pin it to the board. Now that came off the board and back. Good call by the official. Well, there we got a commercial break, and we'll be right back to Atlanta. The All You Can Be, sponsored by the U.S. Army. In the NBA's great pool of talent, no trait is more respected than hustle. It's a burning desire to be first at everything and exceed one's own limitations. Hustle can even compensate for a height disadvantage or a lack of quickness. By giving 110% on every play, Hustle has made Bill Henslick the best he can be. Hey, could I tap quickly around the NBA, folks? At the free throw line. Antoine Carr here for the Hawks. Makes this note. Sotelo always looks like somebody who is in search of a good night's sleep. There is the correct score on that game out Salt Lake. See what I mean? I've seen leads disappear faster than you can play. Chase down and missed by Thomas. It's going to go over to the Hawks. Foul on Sally. Lambeer replaces Sally. tie this trip inside of 940 they'll look to isolate Dominique Wilkins car on a spinner gives it up and Wilkins goes for the three of the lead long rebound knocked away from Thomas Fox ball car charging inside an offensive foul is called against the Hawks Thomas crashing to the floor and that is foul number three against the big fella hasn't played as well in this game as he did the other night against Indiana. Well, one of the reasons is we're watching uh, Detroit double-team him when he gets that ball down low, which is a little different philosophy than uh, Indiana had. Thomas gets it into the hands of Lambeer. Concat came out to double up on Thomas, and Lambeer got open at the baseline. They double Wilkins. Rivers gets it back to him. Knocked away by Thomas. Beautiful defense. Now it's knocked away from Isaiah. So the Hawks get it back. Isaiah got a little cute trying to throw a look away pass. Pick and roll. Rivers keeps it and he's hammered by Lambert. That Lambeer is his fourth. And two of the Hawks starters check back in. Kevin Willis and Randy Whitman return. Konkak stays in the game as the Atlanta center. Checking the Rivers line here this afternoon. He has 12 assists to his credit. Well, this year he broke the club record, which was held by Eddie Johnson. He had, well, he averaged over 10 assists a game this year for the Hawks. Well, there's nothing worse when you're fighting yourself out there in the court, and I think that's what he's doing right now. Lambert and Konkak hook up underneath going for that rebound, and it goes against Konkak, his third person. You can see 32 trying to get inside. Lambert keeping him out. Boy, Lambert is a master of throwing. You also see how hard the Hawks go to the basket on foul shots. They work on that daily. Lambert hits Rodman. Whitman with him. He comes back the other way. Short with the shot. Offensive rebound. Benny Johnson. Now Rodman again scored. Colton on contact in the Hawks. Hey, this young man, Rodman. Eight offensive rebounds. 
I think he's been the difference so far in this game. And Mike Fratello will use a timeout. It's 94-88. A six-point Piston lead and a rookie leading the way. Not on the court right now. And I think for more than any reason is because the offensive rebounds Rodman has been able to get in. The man playing him has been Dominique, and I'm sure that Mike Fratello was upset, so I would expect him to look to go to either Willis or Whitman. Cliff Levingston is the player who has replaced him, number 53. This is Whitman missing, and Levingston pulls down a rebound and gets it back into Whitman's hands. Here comes the pick and roll. Into Willis, got him behind the horn. Lambert moves over. Willis misses the layup. Willis underneath, and it is getting real physical under there. The bodies are banging. And I'm sure Detroit realizes how what an edge this would give them to get get this win here today. Detroit possibly down two. Atlanta one of six from the field in this period. That foul on the horn was his fourth. Look at that. They had Lambeer switching out on Whitman. They're so concerned of him with him coming off those screens. They have the big guy stepping out. Rivers gets free on the drive. But, you know, he's such a phenomenal athlete. You know what he's going to do. He's going to drive to his right to the basket. And every one of these players on Detroit knows it and is still not able to stop it. Golden State still ahead. Not ten minutes left in that game. Here, Rivers gets it to Willis. It's the two-point lead at the 6.48. And the 20-second timeout. Now, with this lineup in there that they have, their offense for Detroit is at the guard position. And that's Isaiah Thomas or Benny Johnson, and they're going to have to do the job until Danley gets in there. Johnson came around trying to use the screen. Whitman stayed with him inside. Here it is in a Rodman. Now along with rebounding, the young man felt it offensively, and he misses the shot. Fox can tie it or take the lead with a three. As Whitman came out, Benny Johnson fouled him. That's his first. Stepping up to that free throw line. Adrian Dantley returning for the Pistons. Four starters plus Benny Johnson on the floor for Detroit right now. Four starters plus John Conkak for the Atlanta Hawks. And now all five starters are out there as Dumars replaces Johnson. Whitman's free throws tie the score at the 6.20 mark. Thomas coming through the maze underneath. Gets inside on Rivers, draws the foul, and he'll come up to the free throw line. You know, you watch him play, and you forget he has that problem with that finger. But he's just such a courageous young man, and he went into the land of Giants that time, and he knew he was going to get knocked to the floor. Now we're about to find out about the acquisition of Adrian Dantley in crunch time for the Detroit Pistons. A year ago, they had Kelly Trapuca out there on the wing. They acquired Dantley from Utah. And these are the moments that they look to the score inside to help them. Thomas, the leader of this team. And at the line, he puts the Pistons back into a two-point lead. Fratello elected to close with Conkak at center, at least for the time being, leaving Rollins on the bench. Whitman maneuvering, looking for the screen. Thomas with him, dives back in on Willis. Open man Rivers, and back to Whitman. Not there, but the Hawks almost had a Thomas out quickly to Dumars. Whitman back defensively, and he fouls Dumars. 
Dumars has come up to that free throw line. That is five fouls on Randy Whitman. That was still a good foul by Whitman in that open court. And because if he otherwise it would have been an easy two. Whitman sits down. Or he will be. McGee will replace him. Detroit has run off 13 straight free throws. Make it 14. With McGee replacing Whitman. Normally we see Atlanta at this time of the game. They're going to look to go to Dominique, get him the basketball, make him the make him make the decision to shoot it or to find somebody open when they double team. Rivers. Uh oh, Bill Ambeer pulled up lane, twisted that right ankle. And some pain as he comes down to the offensive end. Pistons up by two. He goes out to set the screen. Thomas moving the other way. And O'Donnell with the foul call inside. That's Willis's third personal with Rollins replacing Concac for the final 5 16. Well, Kevin Willis was upset with Dominique Wilkins because on that play, Dominique switched out on Lambeer and left Willis with uh, Adrian Dantley. And he was not supposed to do that. And he was. Uh, Letting Dominique know that he's got to stay home defensively. 13 points for Dantley, but 11 of them in the opening period. Lampier is still moving around, trying to loosen up that ankle. Staying in the groove at that free throw line. During this game, Atlanta's had a spurt here or there, either be created by a block shot or a turnover to get out and run, but overall, they have not been able to get out and run as much as they'd like to, especially at home. Now that's 17 straight free throws, and a four-point lead for Detroit, approaching the five-minute mark here at Atlanta. Dominique has it knocked away by Danley. Willis picks it up, and Lambeer fouls him, and he's unhappy with the call. That's his fifth, and he thought he had all ball. Now, Atlanta's going to get very lucky here because Adrian Dantley, using those quick hands, is able to deflect it, and Willis was in the right place at the right time, and a good call by the official. A lot of body with Lambeer. Sally replaces Lambeer. Willis having a big afternoon. Ten rebounds and 19 points. Well, during the regular season, the six games they played, he averaged nearly 16 rebounds against these Detroit Pistons. Dominic and Dantley clearing out on this side. Spins, draws the foul. Wilkins fouled him. That's his second. A lot of time left. Just like I told you. Just like I told you, Billy. Never count Utah out. You have a, a what are you looking at? How do you do this stuff? You amaze me. Harnack over here. <laughs> well, I'm sure it's a little noisy out there at the Soul Oh, Palace. yes. You know, again, when you play Adrian Dantley, not to harp on something, but if you allow him to spin, same thing as Dominique Wilkins. Both players just have that great body control that they can spin on you. You must force them in one direction and not allow them to spin. Four-point lead at the 450 mark. Uh, Sally has a big job defensively. Big spot for the block. Distance come down. Dumars open on the left wing. Oh, yeah, look at the bench. They're getting excited about this in Detroit. 
They feel they're in good shape at this point. They've got a chance to get the first of a seven. Rivers off the pump, misses the shot. Thomas rebounding. Big trip for the Pistons. Good patience, good decision by Isaiah. Dumars with the big shot. Wilkins with a hand, and from the corner, missing was Isaiah Thomas into the hands of Rollins, and now it's Rivers to the attack. Willis with the jump shot. And Dantley tied up with Wilkins underneath. And that's five fouls on Dantley. We get a report from the bench that that Lambeer problem was not so much the ankle. He's also having a little difficulty with his knee. Randy Whitman returning. Wilkins has scored 18 points, and he's 5 of 5. It's a right knee, a little contusion, according to the trainer over there on the Detroit side. And you have to wonder if he has to sit over there very long, Prince, and have to come back in to really stiffen up, stiffen up on him. Now we see that they're going to the pick and roll, Detroit. Now here's a mismatch, Isaiah and Dominique. He'd like to penetrate because he can beat it. Beat Dominique. Pulls up on the shot. Foul was called. And it's on Dominique and Wilkins very unhappy. Technical foul. That's how unhappy he was. A critical moment for a technical foul. Do you get the feeling that Dominique's lost his call a little bit out here? You know, a little upset, a little frustrated maybe the way this game has gone because he has not gotten the basketball as much as he normally does in that scoring area. That's really a bad moment to get assessed a technical foul. At the 3.23 mark, trailing by four, you put Dantley at the line. Detroit has hit 19 throws in a row. Make it 20. A big price to pay. Now we're seeing Chuck Daly go defense, uh, offense, defense, and bringing Rodman in to replace Dantley with those five fouls. Two rookies on the floor for the Pistons. Sally and Rodman with Thomas, who was fouled by Wilkins at the line. But one thing Chuck Daly did this year, he showed great patience. There's four new faces on this ball court that he had to blend together of his top eight. Rodman, Sally, Dantley. That's 22 free throws in a row here for the Detroit Pistons. They lead it by seven. That's their biggest lead of this game. Quickly to Rivers who moves to three and Sally comes back and takes his fifth personal foul. Timeout situation. Meanwhile, three players on Detroit with five personal fouls. Dantley, Lambeer, and Sally. Dantley and Lambeer watching for the bench and Sally playing. Five for the Hawks, one Whitman. And Whitman on the floor. Now, one thing Detroit has to do is be very conscious of a possible trap coming up right here, either full court or half court. And that's what we have. Atlanta's in there, 2 2, one set trapping. And Isaiah calls a timeout to make sure that they're set and know what to do. Returns Golden State clinging to that lead 105 99. Adrian Dantley's back as well, so they have their starting team in there right now. Atlanta 4 of 13 or 31 percent this period. Dumars brings it up on Whitman. Now we're seeing that trap. Isaiah breaks to the right, now comes back, and Willis reaching in to yank the ball away. Tied him up underneath. You'd have to say that's a break for Detroit because Kevin Willis was off and running, and the only person that could catch him is Bill Lambeer, and I'm sure he can outrun him. Matter of fact, I think you can outrun Bill, Bill Lambeer. Don't bet on it. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. He's got a better three-wood for the fairway. <laughs> he can really thump a golf ball. 
orders to the attack now after the jump. Mismatch there. Isaiah had no chance. They get it inside to Willis. The jumper. Not there. And Lambeer muscles his way and fouls out of the game. And he is really tech. a lot of contact on that play and I'm not sure Tree was trying to get to the offensive boards and Lambert you'll see right there in your screen he's going to be boxing him out can't see what he did with his right arm he might have just pushed Tree Rollins out of bounds but obviously he's a little upset and here we'll be able to see with from this angle what he does with that right arm, pushing off. Yes, he did. Rollins hits the free throw. Four points. 107, 103, 230. Now it's down to a three-point lead. It was seven. It was 107, 100. The Hawks have scored the last four points. 2-2-1 two, two, track. Rodman comes in and goes to the glass. And the rookie, not timid. You find some players who don't want that shot in that situation, folks, and Rodman went right to it. Especially a rookie, you would expect him to be looking to get the ball back to Isaiah or one of the or to Dumar in the backcourt, but he took it strong. Now Wilkins goes in strong on Dan. What a shot that was. Almost any other player, you would say he was out of control taking a shot like that. So it's Dantley and Thomas who are the two key offensive men on the floor. Mahorn, Rodman, and Dumars out there with him as the Pistons try to hold on. Wilkins dueling Dantley wants to post him up and back him in. Thomas keeps it for the jump shot. He's short. Offensive rebound. Block. And the shot clock had gone off. Jake O'Donnell signaling it was difficult for the players to hear because of the crowd noise but the shot clock had gone off the ball did not hit the rim it was short so from the side it's going to go to the Atlanta Hawks who are down by three here with 134 to go Dick Versace the former head coach at Bradley sitting there alongside Daly saying yeah we can get this one well one of the two options that they have right now Atlanta at this point is they're gonna look to go you would expect it Dominique or Whitman coming off a screen Willis inside is a one-point game well there's a big match mismatch with Rodman having to play against Willis giving up several inches and also a lot of strength Rodman goes in, throws it up. Mahorn gets it back for the Pistons. What an enormous save. And we only have five seconds left on the 24-second clock. Jake O'Donnell, no basket. No basket. Timeout, Detroit. Timeout was called moments before Dumars made the jump shot. And when you come back, they'll have four seconds to get the shot off. Yeah. Just took the shot before the timeout was called by the official. Now, that is the time remaining in the game. But the important number right now, as far as the clocks are concerned, is the shot clock for Detroit. They have the ball out of bounds, and they have four seconds left on the 24-second shot clock. And what they'll do right here is you'll see Isaiah. They're going to set a screen. Mayhorn will end up screening down for Isaiah to catch the ball up near the top of the circle. Dantley will throw it inbound. Rodman there, Mahorn, Dumars, and Thomas for the Pistons. Now there's the ball. Now he's got to go get that shot. He gets it. And they Thomas with time running out on the shot clock. Hits an enormous hoop here for the Pistons. Now Fratello will design a play. It's 111-108. Thomas. Nice to have a superstar when all else fails. We'll take a break and we'll come back for the conclusion. It's been a dandy. 
loses, loses his balance a little bit, goes up. As you said, it's great to have a star. It sure is. And we've got some more stars coming your way tonight. 60 minutes, murder three, 102. I'm sure many of you noticed that that game out west had the same score a moment ago, 111, 108. Now they'll look to get Dominique the ball, possibly, and look to go one-on-one. -on -one. Using a lot of clock. Rodman sticking with him. Not a car. The car gets the roll over Sally, and it's a one-point game. Isn't it something? There's a player they couldn't get any time earlier in the year, and with a minute left in the game, you're going to him in crunch time. Thomas uses a Detroit timeout. You know, interesting, the last time these two teams met, same type of game except Detroit was down. They got the ball to Isaiah with about seven seconds to go, five seconds, and he missed a seven-foot jump shot that could have won that ball game for uh, Detroit. Stanley gets it into Isaiah Thomas's hands. Pick and roll. Ball is loose. Atlanta's ball. Thomas reaching back in on Doc Rivers. And just like that, it turns the other way. Well, now there's a little pressure on Doc Rivers on the foul line. We've been talking about how he's been struggling in the playoffs. Missed his last two free throws. is the one that would have tied it. I'll tell you what, they better check these Hawks off the defensive boards because they'll be pounding it right now. We are tied with 33 seconds to go. Atlanta knows that they will get the ball back. Even if the Pistons score, they cannot run the clock out. Can't ask for better drama than this. We'll be right back. Five and 17 seconds to go. Now, this is a tough position to get that ball in. Well, they had no problem. I thought taking that ball at half court can sometimes be a real adventure trying to get it in. Now they're looking to go to Dantley. Wilkins stays with it. Shot clock down to 10. Isaiah on the drive through the five. Isaiah Thomas will come up to the free throw line against Fratella's Atlanta Hawks. On that play, Isaiah showed the basketball, made sure he drew the contact, then threw it up. The Detroit Pistons are working on a string of 22 straight successful free throws. it by one timeout called by Fratello's Hawks to set a play here with 16 seconds to go so the Hawks with a chance to win it here at the American Heart Association we're fighting for your life yeah yeah some way in, in this play you know one interesting thing is an assistant coach for Detroit is Ronnie Rothstein Last year, Ronnie Rothstein was sitting at the other end of this building with Mike Fratello in a huddle like this situation. And it would be interesting if his, what type of input he would have for Chuck Daly in this type of situation. Again, can't emphasize enough how difficult at times it is to get the ball in a half court. Because it's not like college where you can throw the ball into the backcourt. You have to keep it in the front court. And these players will be out to nine trying to put the pressure on that basketball. They get the ball into Carr's hands. And he gets it back to Rivers. 
Willis is on the far side. They're going to rotate him through underneath the glass to help on a rebound, and here comes Wilkins. Wilkins with the shot up high, goes back for the rebound. Whitman off the side. Pistons have got it, and they're going to win number one. They're going to take the home court advantage away here in the first game. Great win by the Detroit Pistons in game one of the best of seven. 112, 111. They stopped the Atlanta Hawks. Last gas. Dominique Wilkins shot up high on the glass. Not there. And the Warriors advance. They'll take on the Los Angeles Lakers out west. There was, there was a pensive look at first until the ball went high. Meanwhile, on the Hawks bench, Mike Fratello thinking he was going to get a roll on the shot and then the tap back in. But it was not to be in Atlanta here this afternoon. Fratello claiming there was a foul underneath, but none called in that situation. So we have wound up game one, our middle light player of the game, Young Rodman for the Detroit Pistons. Dennis Rodman, and Miller is proud to present a check for $1,000 to the Multiple Sclerosis Society on behalf of Rodman. So for Billy Cunningham and Pat O'Brien, I'm Brent Musburger. We're going to say so long from the Omni here in Atlanta, Georgia, where the final score is Atlanta losing to Detroit 112 to 111. They'll play the second.